Before we go into it, I wanted to announce that I'm going to have Dom, Primetime Treasure, on Tuesday, August 13th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to be talking about bolos and some sourcing tips. So if you want to hear some good content, don't miss the show. Hey, it's Don the Auction Professor here. Today we're going to talk about another bolo. We're going to talk about canning jars. Let's hop over there right now and show you what we're talking about. Now here we are with canning jars. Most people know the mason jar. That's like the standard, but that's not the only one. There's a ton of other different varieties and brands that made jars as well. It was a sprouting industry back in the 1830s, 40s, 50s, trying to find ways to can stuff. Here's an early Heller. This is a William Heller uh, PA jar, fruit canning jar. It takes a different style of lid, like a pressure style of lid on this one here. Looks like you squeeze or turn the wing nut and then it tightens down from there. But nice example of this one, $500. Now this is something, jars in general, that I find in estate sales, garage sales, flea markets, antique malls, really anywhere you find collectibles. I bought them at Savers, um, Goodwill, Salvation Army, mom and pop thrift stores across the board. Most of them will at least sell locally for eight or 10 bucks if you have the lid, even if they're newer ones, just because people do collect them and put things in them. We actually have a few in our bathroom. One holds cotton swabs and another one holds Q-tips. So people do do things with them besides just setting them there. Most people store things in them just for decorations, if nothing else. Now, Globe's another name um, that you'll see marked on them as well. If I see a Globe marked on it, I'm almost always going to look it up, if not buy it. These pale style handles on here are well collected also. It pretty much forces it down. It's like a tension style uh, lid sealer on this one. Perfect example. You will expect to find them rusted. If they're not rusted, they will go for more money. This one's $537 with 25 bids. Now here's an Imperial, another early, this is 19th century, late 1800s, 1880s, 90s, even in through the, say, 1900 era. This is very rare with the scepter in its hand, uh, Imperial scepter, I guess you could say. Really nice one. Any ones with imagery on it do go for some good money. $537 with 16 bids. Now, this isn't a monster size category, but it's something that you'll turn up all the time. I can turn up mason jars pretty much any time I really want to dig for them. Barn sales, I find tons of them. Sometimes I've walked away with crates of these things at barn sales. For five, ten bucks, most people didn't mess with them five or ten years ago. Nowadays, they're getting a resurgence in collectors. So, anyway, nice example here. This is a fruit jar. It's a pale design. Nicely marked on the bottom, as you can see. It even says glass pale. Most of these, again, are 1800s. This is like 1880s on this one here. $536, six bids on this one. Now, here is what would be called an amber. It's almost an olive, but not. There's many different grades of the coloring. This is a Mason CFJ. It's a quart size. Size means a lot, as does what's marked on the bottom. This one doesn't have a specific number, but it does have the markings for the 1858 patent on it. $627, 21 bids on this one here. Now here's another one. This one's more olivish yellow. Now the, the color wise, there's like a honey, there's an amber, there's olive green, there's a light green, there's a light amber. There's many different varieties and colors of this. Jars in general, you can easily look up online without an issue at all. There's a ton of sites that will explain every aspect of the jar. So there's not a big need to go into that until you find them. This is a perfect standard seal on these. Uh, just a nice example here. You want bubbles in the glass also. So you'll see some listings saying multiple bubbles, many bubbles, thousands of bubbles. That means it's an earlier glass example. $512, nine bids on this one. Now, another thing that people collect are the smaller ones. The smaller ones, the little pint ones, and half pint seems to go for the most money, or the easiest to flip, I should say. This is a Port Huron. This is an Atchison Oil Dag. That's the company that made this. 
they do show up. I have actually found some similar ones to this here. I'm close to the area. Port Huron's not very far away, so the company that made these is local. And this is another aspect you can look into on jars. Most cities had a manufacturer, at least decent-sized cities, had a manufacturer. So around the plants, you can find stuff like salesman samples and other examples in general. But this one went for $440, 22 bids on this one. Now here's another. This one's a good green example. You can really see the green in this one here. The number on the bottom is usually very important. This is a two-quart jar. It doesn't match the size on it. Numbers are different on the jars, and some will have various different numbers on them. There's a huge range of jars, and I'm going to show you one listing here in a few minutes that puts together all these ranges, or a, a large swatch of them. This one went for $229 with 22 bids. Now here is another example of something interesting that happens to jars. They're crudely made back in the day. This one has an embedded nail into it. Not odd, so to speak. I have seen jars with other things in it. Pieces of other jar, even different colored pieces, metal, uh, specks of pottery. All kinds of things can show up in some of these. It's not as rare as you would honestly think. Uh, this is an Atlas, another brand, $204. 24 bids on this one. Had it not had this, this wouldn't have went for anything near that. 30, 40, 50, 60 bucks at the most. Strong shoulder is the variety on this too. It's a thicker shoulder to hold more weight or more pressure in these. Here is another. Now this is a yellow amber. This is a really golden style one. So they've got golden yellow amber on this one. This is an 1858 with the original zinc lid. You can buy replacement lids. People will buff these up, bring them back to the original. All the 1858 ones are worth at least something also, so just keep that in mind. This one's basically $180. Now here we go with a lot. Now this has a half pint, a pint, a quart, and a half gallon in through here. Uh, a really nice example of what people like to collect. This is 175 bucks. Nothing special on their own, but people like the whole sets. You'll see dozens of these setup sets all ready to go. Now there's bigger sizes. There's two, three, five gallon mason jars. Some are made to hold like pickles and things like that. Some of them would also be used at like a grocery store or a dry goods place or, you know, just something along that line, a grocery store back in the day. Just real nice example here, 175 bucks. Now here's another one. This is a monogram one. Uh, it has like a logo in monogram below it, as you can see there. This is a Mason's Improved. It has a milk glass lid on it, which is rather unique on this one. You can find these. They're not super, super rare. 153 bucks, 11 bids. This is more in the lower middle range price-wise on this one here. Not super rare, but again, most of the color jars you will be able to sell for at least 30 bucks. Uh, here's a couple other ones. Now this one again is by the numbers on the bottom they're being sold. They're smaller size, two and a seven on the bottom. Again, look these up for yourself if you want to know more information about them. It's very easy to look up mason jars or any type of canning jar. $155 on these. These are typical examples of what I find in garages or basements in all honesty. Now here's a, this one's more along the lines of a purplish. This could literally just be from sitting out in the sun, believe it or not, because the sun will change the color. It's a three liter, I think is what this one says. It says clear, but again, they do slightly tint once they've been around for a while. $149 on this one. Now this is another one that I really like. I run into these occasionally. Salesman samples. Now sometimes they'll be missing the lid and you might see them as salt and pepper shakers as well. But the lid that goes on these is the deciding factor. If it has a standard lid like a normal ball jar, it's a salesman sample. And there's bunches of, there's probably 50 or so up on eBay at any given time. $146, 30 bids. They range from 75 bucks on up usually on these. Some without a lid will still sell, but there is a discrepancy sometimes. People will confuse the salt and pepper shakers, the newer ones from the 60s, 70s, and 80s with the salesman sample. Now here is one of the large ones. This is a two and a half gallon, another typical 1858 with the handle. Now the lid may be a replacement, it looks like on this one. 
yeah, it's definitely a replacement of plastic lid, but they just probably used it or for decorations. This is a lot more common than you would think with the eagle on it. I believe this is a new one, if I'm not mistaken. Say not new, but probably from the 50s or 60s. There are originals and there are some uh, reproductions on some of these. So just keep that in mind. 135 bucks. The size alone would dictate if it's a mason this big that it will hold some value either way. Another small one here. Now, this could be a reproduction lid or they've buffed it up. Now, I've seen people buff these up with a Dremel, in all honesty. As long as it's in good, stable condition, you can still do that for some of these. Or it could just be a replacement lid. It's hard to say. Regardless of what they state in the listing, I still don't judge it by that. I judge it by whether I can see the inside and if the inside shows that it's real or not. Now, this one's not showing the inside of the lid, so that would hesitate me to think that, hey, yeah, it's probably a reproduction lid. But either way, it's still a nice example. Here's another good example. This is an olive green, like some of the black glass you would see. It's a really nice example. It's really a green one here. Most of the ones that state green aren't really green. They're more like along the lines of an amber, but this is a true olive green one. Nice example, 125 bucks on this one. Lit or not, some of these just go for decent money regardless, just because they're that rare. You can always find a replacement lid. The jars are broken, though, and sometimes you can even find the lids still new, sealed in boxes and packages. Now, here's a beach and Claridge. Uh, and this one here, too, they've painted the lettering so you can read it better. That's a standard practice for those who are into bottles. I'm going to show you some of our bottles, our personal collection of bottles here shortly. I'm going to do a day in my area for that and show you, too. But this is a really nice example. 120 bucks. Painting the letters isn't a big deal. It comes off. Now, here's a number 13 mason jar. Nice early example also. It's a smaller sized one. Everything on the bottom means something in these. So, again, just look it up. You'll be able to see easily. This is a pint, $102, 19 bids on this one. Next one is a lightning mason jar. It's a half a gallon. This is a true honey amber. It literally looks like honey when held up to the light. 100 bucks. One bit on this one here. Uh, and they painted it, it looks like, too. Yes, they have painted the text on it. So that's really interesting on this one. I really like the painted ones, personally. I think it shows them off much better. Now, here is another. Now, this is a five-gallon one. These aren't as well collected. Some of these, again, are reproductions or newer versions of it. I can't tell you specifically on this one here. If you ever want to know how much these store, just fill it with water. Pour it out and measure it as you pour it. That's all you got to do. So a lot of people have that question. How much is in it? Just pour some liquid in it, pour it into a measuring cup, and then measure it off from there. So anyway, that's what I have for you today. Well, there you go. There's another item that I do look for. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.